In this series of lectures, we'll introduce some basic and important concepts in calculus. As an entry level course, we often adopt approaches that are intuitively clear but might not be mathematically rigorous. In particular, we will not use the famous epsilon delta language. In this video, we introduce the concept of derivative. First of all, let's look at the physical meaning of derivative. Uh, this is the uh, original motivation when Newton introduced the concept of derivative. All right, let's look at uh, um, a simple setup. Suppose that we have a particle, let's say this is the origin, and a particle that is uh, or vehicle that's moving uh, along a path, we can say just the x-axis. Okay, and then we let x t represents the position of the particle or the vehicle at the time t. Okay, uh, if we draw the graph of time and the location, let's draw it. So, which is also say the graph or the function x t. Okay, uh, this is the t, and uh, here is y equals x t. Okay, now uh, in general, the, uh, the motion might not have constant speed. Okay, so this is, let's put it here. So here's the point why calculus is needed. The speed is not constant. All right, then um, if we draw the graph of the, um, of the uh, xt, right, at each moment, we record the location. What would happen is first, Say it's um it's a, it's a, it, it it speeds up and then at some point it slows down right okay so this is uh, y equals to uh, x t okay the pass now uh, say if we want to calculate um, the uh, average speed right we we choose two moment say this is the moment say it's x one and this is the moment which is x three right x one just means the location at a time one, okay? So let, let's say, all right, so this is the time one and this is uh, the time three, right? Time three. And we look at the location, right? This is X one. And then we look at the location, this is X three. Now, if we just want to, if we just care, if we just care about the average speed, okay, so then we look at the average speed, right? So we have the average speed between time one and three, uh, it's just calculate by the travel distance x3 minus x1 and divided by the time that it goes by, which is three minus one, right? Uh, this is, uh, I can write as two, x3 minus x1. So this is the average speed uh, between time one and time three. Or of course, uh, between one and three, what could happen is, it speeds up and then slow down and slow down and then speeds up, but that doesn't matter right? because all we care about is average speed, which by definition is a travel distance, uh, travel distance divided by travel time. Now say if you want to find something called uh, instantaneously velocity or instantaneously velocity, right? So here, let's say we use uh, the word velocity instead of uh, speed uh, because uh, velocity also, um, uh, takes the, uh, the direction into consideration. Okay, all right. So let's say we want to find the instantaneous, instantaneous uh, velocity. Now intuitively, how should we do that? Uh, let's say at uh, time one, right? How should we do that? Well, uh, what you can do is intuitively say, okay, what we can do is I just find the time which is very close to one, right? Very close to one. Or we say, all right, I just find a T which is very close to one. And then we say, let's find the average speed. And then we say, okay, let's find the average speed. Uh, find from here, we say, uh, let's put it here. So we find the average speed, speed uh, between uh, one and a T, right? Between one and a T, it's, a, it, it's right here, okay? Between one and a T, it's, it's very, uh, the T is very close to one, which uh, by definition, of course, we know just as T minus X1 and divided by T minus one, right? So this is the average speed within this small time interval. And then intuitively, how should I calculate the instant speed? Well, you look at the average speed 
between t and one, and, and this is just how we calculate, right? And then you see, I, if I let t as close as, uh, as to one, in mathematics, we say just the limit, right? If this one limit exists, then we define this as the instantaneous velocity, right? If we don't care about the direction of the speed, let's say velocity, right? So this is defined as the instantaneous uh, velocity, again, let me just change say to velocity, right? Uh, at the time one, right? At a time one, you take the limit. Okay. Uh, well, let's look at uh, several uh, situations, uh, the speed changes, right? Examples. Examples where, uh, let's say velocity uh, changes, right? For example, right? One thing is I, if I drop a ball, then we know due to the gravity, uh, the velocity, the velocity increases, right? It gets uh, uh, faster and faster, right? So this is one example. Or another example, you say, if I put, let's say this is a check, right? it has smooth, no uh, friction. And then we put a ball here and the ball will load uh, down the check, uh, the check. And uh, because again, due to the gravity, uh, the speed will get uh, larger and larger, right? It speeds up. Okay, so the point is uh, there, are in, there are many uh, situations in real applications, the speed is not constant. So that's the, the reason that we need to introduce a calculus, right? To uh, use the calculus, the limit to, uh, to represent the instantaneous velocity. Now, and this one we denote, if this limit exists, we denote this one as the derivative of the, the, of the locational path at time one, and that's the instantaneous velocity at one. Okay. Now let's look at the geometric meaning of, um, of velocity. Okay, uh, look at the, um, consider, let's consider the um, uh, corner plane. Okay? Let's say this is X and this is Y. Now suppose I have, have a line, so this is line L. Uh, we know there's something called a slope, right? So this is slope. How do you calculate the line of slope? We just pick two points, right? Just pick two points. Uh, this is the coordinates x1, y1. And this is the point coordinates x2, y2, right? Okay, so this is x1, and this is x2, and this is y1, and this is y2. Now, let's record how we define a slope. What's the definition of a slope? Well, geometrically slope, uh, is measures how far, right? In terms of angle, let's say this is angle theta, right? In terms of the angle, how far it is from horizontal. So the slope is defined as the tangent theta, right? And then we know how you calculate the tangent of theta. Uh, this is the delta y, right? Which is y2 minus y1. And then this one is delta x, which is x2 minus x1. Okay, so then this tells us if you give me a line, uh, then the uh, the slope is just given by this is what we have, right? So this is what we have, how we calculate the slope. Oh, oops. This is how we calculate the slope of a line, right? Slope of a line. Okay, now let's look at the situation. What if it's not a line, right? We say, okay, let's say, uh, suppose we have a curve. This is corresponding to uh, the case when the velocity is not a constant, right? In the physical scenario. Okay, all right. So anyway, to actually say, suppose we have a curve, which is not, uh, which is not a line, right? So we say, okay, so that's uh, say we, that uh, this is what we have, uh, right? So let's say uh, this is what we have. Okay, all right. Uh, say it's this given y equals to fx. Now I have a point. We have a point here. So this is the point x0, right? x0. Now geometrically, uh, if the curve is uh, it's, uh, kind of smooth, that means there's no corner, no sharp turn, uh, then we, we can talk about the tangent line. Right? Intuitively, tangent line just means something which is infinitesimally close to the curve. All right, now we want to see what's the slope of this tangent line, right? Okay, so that's what we want to figure out. Now, intuitively, um, how should we approach the tangent line? So what you can do is, 
Uh, I choose a point, say it's kind of far away from it, right? Now I choose a point. Okay, All right. Uh, this is point, let's say X here. And then I connect these two points. Uh, what's the slope? Let's, let's find the slope of this one. Well, all we need to do is find the coordinate. This is the coordinate is X zero and F X zero, right? And then this point is X and F X. Remember, we have a formula to compute the slope of a line, right? If I go here, then I get the slope of this line segment equals the difference between Y coordinate F X minus F X zero divided by the X difference, right? So this is the delta Y and this is the delta X. Okay, now everything here is well-defined. The point is, if I try to uh, get to the tangent line intuitively, right? So this is the line, we can extend it. Now, if I get a point close to it, that means X is approaching to this line, to this point. And I X is approaching to this point. Then intuitively, you will see those lines, they are approaching. So as X approaching to X zero, you can go from either direction, doesn't really matter, right? You say go from each direction. Uh, here, I, what I present is from the right-hand side. But anyway, so let's say if you approach your X approach X zero, you will just get those lines. Those lines, they approach the tangent line, right? They approach the tangent line. So we expect that. So we expect they approach something that is infinitesimally close to the curve. All right, so that's tangent line. Okay, so then, you know, in mathematically, uh, we know, well, uh, then the slope of the tangent line shall just equal to take the limit, right? Approach in mathematics just means the limit. I'll say, okay, let's take the limit of the slope. As X goes to X zero, of course, X is not equal to X zero, right? So that's X, but it's very close to X zero. So X minus X zero and just this one. And FX minus X zero. Now, if the limit of this exists, uh, which we denote F the derivative. Okay, so the, if the limit exists, we define this as the derivative. And this represents the slope of the tangent line. So this is the geometric meaning of derivative. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. So here is the formal definition of, uh, of a derivative. Uh, we know that given a function, the derivative just means if I want to calculate the derivative at a point X zero, so this is how we calculate, right? If I look at the difference between the values divided by the difference between X, Right. Uh, of course, I if I if I write this as H, then I can rewrite as uh, uh, this form. So they are equivalent, the same. So this is how we define derivatives. So if uh, this limit exists, we say the function is differentiable at a point x zero. And as we know geometrically, this just means the tangent line. Uh, in physics, means um, means uh, the velocity. Right. So in physics, it, as we said. If I have the, if XT means the path, right? Then if you take the derivative, this means the velocity, okay? In geometry, if I have the graph of function Y equals, to, if I have a graph of Y equals to FX, then given the point, if I take the derivative, the derivative means the slope of the tangent line at this point. So these are the geometric, and the physical meaning of derivative. Now, if the function f is differentiable at every point uh, within where, where f is defined, uh, we just write this as the derivative function. Now, when you look at uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the differentiability, right? That means the different, if the function is differentiable, clearly it has to be continuous, right? Because we want the ratio to exist, okay? Right. If there's no, if there's a jump, then you cannot have a tangent line, right? Okay, so both geometrically and analytically, we know if, so here's the point, if F is uh, differentiable, implies it's uh, continuous, right? It's continuous. F is differentiable implies it's, it's continuous. Okay, 
All right, now uh, let's look at uh, several examples. So example one, okay? So suppose you have a constant function. What's a constant function? I mean, just let's say constant equals to one, right? For example, let's look at this. This is X and this is Y, right? And then this is a function. Let's say it's just constant equals to one, right? So F is constantly equals to one. Now, what's the derivative? From geometrically, you know, well, it's a tangent line, right? Because it's constant, the fact it's, it's horizontal. So that if it's a tangent line, of course, the slope is zero, right? So if along here, you say, okay, I just get the derivative is equal to zero. Geometrically, it's clear, right? The tangent line has to be horizontal. But we can also do this analytically or analytically. Let's see this. Uh, suppose, okay, so analytically, let, uh, let's verify. Analytically, let's verify this. Okay. All right. Suppose my function fx is constant equals to some b, right? And this means constantly equal to b. Then how we calculate the derivative? By definition, right? If I want to calculate the derivative at a point x like zero, this by definition is the limit as x goes to zero. So this, remember, this is the definition. Definition. Okay. So this is just x minus x zero and fx minus fx zero. Now look, the function is constantly equal to b. So that means this one is b and this one is b. Then of course, it's just constant zero, right? Obvious. Now let's look at uh, the case. This is linear. So let's, do, let's first geometrically understand what shall be the, the derivative, right? Okay, so this is x, this is y, and we know he has a, he has a function, right? So this gx, y equals gx equals ax plus b. Now, if you have a tangent line, you say, okay, what, what is the derivative? The derivative is the slope of the tangent line, okay? When, keep in mind that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. But what's the slope? It, 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 this is, it itself is a line, right? So the slope is constant equal to a. So from here, we say, okay, so, all right. So then the derivative is just constantly equals to a. All right, now let's verify this. Uh, so geometrically, well, my point is geometrically clear. If you have a linear function, the derivative is just slow, but let's analytically verify it. Analytically. Verify it, okay? All right, all right. So let's remind ourselves. So we have gx equals ax plus b, right? Okay, so how we calculate the derivative at a given point x zero? The derivative by definition is the limit as x approaches zero, and we look at the ratio x minus x zero, and this is gx minus gx zero. So this again, remind ourselves, this is the definition. All right, so now I put everything here. So this is x minus x zero, right? And then this is x minus zero. Now you plug this here, plug this there, okay? So it's ax plus b minus ax zero plus b. Uh, if you uh, if you remove the uh, the bracket, the b b cancel with each other. What we what we have the next one we have is x goes x zero. So this is x minus zero, a x minus a x a x zero. But now look at look at this guy. Uh, what's the top? At the top is just a times x minus x zero and divided by x minus x zero. So cancel with each other. Right? So, okay, they just cancel with each other. Get this thing right. All right, so analytically, we get uh, the same thing. It's consistent with the geometric intuition, obviously. All right, okay, so then here we let's, uh, so for this one, let's put it here. The derivative function is constantly equals the slope a, right? Okay, now let's look at the quadratic function. How about the quadratic function? Uh, let's draw this the graph, right? Okay, here's the graph of the, uh, this is x and this is y. And here we have this the graph, right? So it's uh, y equals x squared. Now, what do we want? So, okay, geometrically, you just want to see if I give you a point x zero, what is the slope of the tangent line, right? The geometric meaning, we know this guy is just uh, it's given point x zero, right? So the, the, the tangent line at this point on the graph, right? So this x zero, fx zero, right? Okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, now let's uh, let's analytically find it. Right? Let's do it. Okay. By definition, 
uh, f prime x zero equals the limit as x goes to x zero, right? Let's write out x minus zero. And this is uh, f x minus f x zero, right? We always just write out the definition. And then we know, right? Then we know this one is x squared and this one is x zero squared. So what we have is x squared minus x squared minus x zero squared. And let's use our favorite um, factorization, right? So let's use this one, a squared minus b squared equals a minus b times a plus b, right? Let's use this, okay? So then this is x to the x zero, uh, x minus x zero times x plus x zero divided by x minus x zero. And this is great because we immediately realize we can cancel this with each other. So we just get is the limit x minus x zero and x plus x zero. And then of course, everything is very clear. X approach x zero means this one becomes just close and close x zero. So this we know the limit, it goes x zero and this is fixed. So everything will just be two x zero. Okay, good. So we get the derivative of this one is just twice of x zero. Uh, if I write here, means the derivative of this is two x. So the derivative of x squared is two x. Okay, that's what we have. Right? So the slope is twice of x zero. All right, now let's look at uh, um, a polynomial, right? X to the n, n is the part of integer. Let's calculate its, uh, its derivative. Let's calculate the derivative. By definition, again, let's just keep reminding ourselves uh, the definition of, um, of derivative, and which is important, right? conceptual is important. It happens very often that students, uh, they remember those formulas of derivatives, but they forgot the, uh, the, the definition, the original definition of derivative. Okay, let's remind ourselves. So the derivative of this equals to x goes to x zero, right? And f x minus f x zero and divided by x minus zero, all right? Now let's, uh, let's replace this by x n and this by x zero n. And then you see, we end up with something like xn minus x zero n. All right, so what shall we do? Factorize it, right? That's what we call the factorization. So the factorization of this is x minus x zero uh, times, all right, so let's uh, times uh, x to the n minus one plus x to, to the n minus two times x zero uh, plus uh, x minus three times x zero squared, right? and uh, da, 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 all the way to x times x zero, m minus two and plus x zero, m minus one. Okay, now then uh, if you, if you uh, divide this by x minus x zero, right put here, and you divide this by x minus x zero and good. We, again, we get a cancellation. So this just equals to the limit, right? Maybe I write here, okay? And this, we got this equals the limit as x goes to x zero. And all we need to care about is right here, right? So the limit of those things, x to the m minus one plus x to the m minus two times x zero plus x minus three, x zero squared, and all the way to x, x zero, m minus two, plus x zero to the n minus one. Now, uh, well, then you see when x approach x zero, what's this one? Obviously, this one just will go to x zero to the n minus one. Now this one will go to x zero. So just replace x just by x zero, right? So this one go to x zero, go to x zero, go to x zero. Just replace x by x zero because that's limit says. And then what do you have? So each term will just be x zero to the n minus one. This will be x zero to the n minus one. This will be x zero to the n minus one. And how many terms do we have in total? If you want to calculate the number of terms, you get this n copies of x zero to the power n minus one. So the final answer will be n times x zero to the n minus one. And that is the derivative. As a summarized, if you have this function, we get is x n, the power of this is n times x to the n minus 
one, right? To the n minus one. Okay, we get the formula. Uh, next, let's look at the reciprocal of xm, right? Let's say, okay, um, what about uh, reciprocal of this? This is a negative power, right? How should we do it? Again, let's just use the definition, right? Let's just use the definition. Uh, for example, let's say, uh, let's start with n equal to one, right? We say I have x, x is one over x, right? And then I want to calculate the derivative at a sub point x zero, right? Okay, and then uh, how you should do is, oh, well, this just by definition is, we just take the limit, right? We just take the limit as x goes zero, and this is fx minus fx zero over x minus x zero, okay? And then this one is equals to uh, one over x, and this is one over x zero. Now, what you need to do is to combine this into a one term, right? Okay, just an algebra, all right? Uh, let's do it. One over x minus one over x zero. You combine it into one term. So it's x, x zero, x zero minus x. That's what we have, okay? And then let's see, we have, this is the limit as x to x zero. This is x minus x zero. So it has x zero minus x over x times x zero. Now, again, you see, you, you spot the cancellation. So this one cancel with each other, but because this is x minus x zero, but this is x zero minus x, you get a negative sign here come out. Okay, good. So then this is just the limit as x goes to x zero, right? Of course, here, everything we have zero is not zero, otherwise not defined, right? Then this is the negative one over x times x zero. Now, when x approached x zero, this guy will just approach x zero, so it's just replaced by x zero. So what you have is one over x zero squared. So in other words, from here, I get if n equal to one, one over x, if you take the derivative, is negative x squared, right? It's negative x squared. Now, then you can do by the same thing, you can, uh, uh, by similar procedure, you get uh, the x negative n, take the derivative, and this will be negative n x to the negative n minus one. So in other words, I can write as negative n over x n plus one, x n plus one. Okay. Now, uh, let's look at uh, the derivative of the square of x. Right? Uh, well, this is the, uh, the graph of the square of x is defined when x is non-negative. Okay. Uh, so here what we're looking for is, we say, okay, we're looking for it geometrically, it means you fix the point x zero here, you want to find the slope of the tangent line. Okay, let's calculate analytically, right? Okay. Now L prime x zero by definition is the limit as x goes to x zero, and this square root of x minus the square root of x zero divided by x minus x zero, right? Take the limit, that's just the, the definition. Right? Okay, so this, remember this is fx and this is fx zero, right? Always remind ourselves the definition of a limit, right? Okay, uh, well, so what do we do is, as we, you are here, the square root here, right? So let's uh, multiply its uh, conjugate. This is plus the square root of zero times the square root of x plus the square root of x zero, right? Okay, now the top a minus b times a plus b, and we get the top equals the limit, goes x zero, so this is x minus x zero, and it has square root of x, and plus the square root of x zero, right? Okay, so then a minus b times a plus b, this is a square minus b square, right? Okay, so then you just get this is equals, if you just look at the top, take it, all right? So if you just look at the top, what you get? You get the square root of x squared minus square x zero x squared, which is x minus x zero. Okay, so that's what I have is x minus x zero. Now you say, okay, good. We again, we have a cancellation, all right? And then we'll just have the limit as x goes to x zero, one over the square root of x plus square root of x zero. Now, because this one approach x zero, this is fixed, and this one I can just replace this by x zero. 
by limit. So this equals two over the square root of uh, not two over, but I have two copies, right? I just get one over two copies of x zero. Okay, as a summary, as a sum, as a summarize, uh, as a summary, let's summarize this. So by this commit, we have a derivative of this equals that. Okay, I can write this as the square root derivative is one half one over the square root x. Now let's see what happens. If I look, try to find, uh, look at what's this, right? So this is okay. I look at a point edge here. I look at the slope of this line and uh, I let edge approach zero. So this just means what you say, okay, I this kind of get a tangent line at the point zero. Well, this is vertical and we know the slope does not exist, right? I would say the slope is infinity. But anyways, analytically, we expect this one does not exist. It's okay, does not exist, right? Uh, well, analytically, let's do this analytically. Okay, okay. Uh, well then we, we have, so this is basically you can somehow you can find is can view as this is the derivative at a point x equals zero, right? Okay. And if you write this one now, you say, okay, this is just the limit as x h approach zero from the, from the right-hand side, right from the right-hand side. And this is the square root of h of h, but I can simplify this. And this is just one over square root of h, right? And then you see, this is constant one, but how about this guy? But this guy goes to zero. So it's one over zero. We know this is plus infinity, right? It gets just to, uh, to infinity. So we know that this one does not exist. And this is consistent with uh, geometrically, we know the slope, the tangent line here, the slope, it's, a, it's a vertical. So the slope does not exist, right? All right, now let's look at uh, example uh, six. This is a piecewise defined function. When X is positive, the function is X squared. And when X is negative, the function is negative X squared, right? Now for this part, when X is positive, then of course we know the derivative of this is a two X. This is what we calculated before. When X is negative, it's negative X squared and this is uh, negative two X. What is not completely clear is what happens, eh? what happens at zero, right? What's the derivative at zero, okay? This is what not so clear. What's the derivative? Uh, let's do it by definition. So first you approach from the right-hand side, right? So this you approach from the right-hand side and then you approach, you can approach from the left-hand side, right? So this is negative X. Okay, let's do it. If you approach from the right-hand side, X approach from zero plus the right-hand side. And for this is x squared, right? Okay, so this is x squared minus zero over x minus zero, right? Over x minus zero, okay? Because this is just x, x squared. And this is just the limit, x goes to plus, and this is okay. So this is two x, but all, uh, it's, um, it's x, right? It's x, because this x squared divided by x. Okay, so this, we know, obviously is zero. Uh, how about if we try to do from the uh, from the uh, uh, right hand side, right? So okay, what 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 happens if I do from the uh, from the right hand side, from the left hand side, right? X goes to zero minus, right? Let's do this way. Okay, and here the difference is for this is negative x squared, so it's negative x squared minus zero, x minus zero, right? F change. So x, um, this one does not change. Um, the form does not change. All right, so then what you have, you get the limit x goes to zero minus uh, minus x. But look at here, although this is minus x, but when x goes zero, this one, again, this is zero. So the point is you see, oh, you say basically there's no difference. They just approach to the same tangent line. So for this one, the tangent line is just the x axis. The slope is zero, they match. Okay, so there's no, uh, there's no corner, right? So okay. So then, as a um, uh, so as a summary, as the summary, uh, we have here. We say, okay, what's the derivative? The derivative just equals two x when x is positive, negative two x when x is less than zero, and is zero when x is zero. Okay, it's continuous. All right. Now here are some basic uh, uh, rules of the uh, regarding derivative. Suppose that f and g, they are both differentiable at x zero. So if you multiply f by constant, 
by a tilde derivative, you can just pull the constant out. And uh, if f plus g is tilde derivative, uh, the derivative of the sum equals the sum of derivatives, right? So those can be easily uh, verified by, uh, by, by the definition. For example, let's say we look at this, right? Uh, how, you, how you define uh, the derivative. So this one is okay. So this just equals the limit, right? At x goes to x zero. This is by definition. So x minus zero, okay? So it's f plus g and x minus f plus g uh, x zero by definition, right? And then I can split. So here I can split. So this just is okay. F x plus g x minus f x zero minus g x zero, right? Then we can group these two together and uh, these two together. And what you get is okay. So you just get the limit as x goes x zero. And this is f x minus f x zero divided by x minus x zero, right? And plus the limit as x goes to x zero. So here's x minus zero. So this is gx minus gx zero. Now what's this? This is just the limit. This is the derivative, right? That's by definition because assume it's differentiable. Okay, uh, then uh, if you say, if I polynomial, right? If I polynomial, we know if you take the derivative of this, if you take the derivative of this, equals the derivative of the sum equals sum of each derivatives, right? Each derivative. And the derivative of this is just equal to that. If you stick a n and x n, right? Take the derivative. This one is constant. Uh, this one, remember the x n, you take the derivative, they just n times x minus one, so times n x minus one. So which is exactly, uh, there's no a here. Uh, that this, is, this one should be n, okay? This one should be n. Okay, so this is n here, right? So n times uh, a n times m minus one. So each one will be like this. Right? So for example, right? For example, if I have special one, so if I have px, say it's x cubed plus two x y plus one, then if you take the derivative of this, you both take the derivative of this one, so three x squared, and you take the derivative of this, which is two, and take the derivative of this, which is zero. So that's, you just take a derivative of each term. Now, as we said, if the function is, uh, is differentiable, then it's always continuous. But a function continuous might not, uh, might not mean it's necessary uh, differentiable. So let's look at this, um, let's look at uh, this example, right? Let's look at this example. Okay. So here we have, this is the absolute value function. If we draw the graph, so this is what we have, right? So this is the graph we have here. Okay, so this is x, right? You say, okay, um, well, this is x and this y and this is zero. Uh, what happens is this, this is of course is continuous as we said before. Now, this function, if you have x is positive, right? You have just have x equals x and we know the derivative of this is just one, right? It's the slope, the slope is one, okay, it's one. Now, if you look at uh, from when x is negative, right? You say, okay, um, when x is negative, fx is negative x, the derivative is just negative one. You the slope of this, obviously, is just negative one. What, but what is not differentiable is the corner. You see, there's a corner here, right? What happens is, if you look at the one from the right-hand side, you get the slope is one. But if you look at, uh, if you go from the, from the left-hand side, you get a slope is negative one. So that's why it have, has corner out. In other words, this limit, if you say analytically, right? So you say, okay, so this is corner, not differentiable. There's no tangent line, not differentiable. Not differentiable. You are not able to find the line that's infinitesimal to it. So you, you can see this analytically. Analytically, right? It's okay, I try to get the, get the, the, uh, um, the limit, right? Okay, uh, well, then I have X minus Z, uh, zero, and the absolute value minus zero, right? So this is just the fx, uh, this is f zero, right? Okay. Which is the limit? As x goes zero, and this is x, and this one, all right? Okay, now the question is, does the limit exist? Uh, we know that it, 
because when x x approaches zero, it has to approach zero from both sides, from the left hand side and from the right hand side, right? From the right hand side, and they have to match if the limit exists. Okay. Now let's look at uh, the one from the uh, from the uh, uh, right hand side. It's approach from the right hand side, and for that case. Uh, this is just x over x, right? Because x is positive, and which is one. But if you if you approach from the left hand side, that x approach zero from the left hand side, uh, then what you have is you say okay, it's negative x over x, right? And which is negative one, and they do not match. They're not equal, right? They're not equal. So that means the limit does not exist. Now, what was my point? My point is in order for the limit exists, if exists, left and the right has to match, has to match. But when we go from the right, the limit is one. If we go from the left, the limit is negative one, they do not match. In geometry, it just means that there's the jump in slope, right? There's a corner here, so it's not differentiable, right? Okay, okay, uh, all right. Uh, so when we say a function is uh, discontinuous at a point, geometry just means there's a jump. When we say a function is discontinuous at a, uh, a function is not differentiable at a point, geometry means they're just, um, there is, um, there's a corner. So if you look at the, the graph here, right? And you see uh, there's a corner here. So there's a corner. There's another corner. And this is also a corner, right? So those are the places they are not corner, means not differentiable. Not differentiable. Uh, you have a jump between the slopes, right? You have a jump between slopes. So you have slopes right here. You have slopes and, and from another direction, right? If you look at it from the right, they're they are different, right? So we have a corn. Okay, uh, at this point, if you look at this point, there's no corner here. So here uh, you see the tangent line is horizontal. So this, the tangent line is horizontal. What does that mean? That means at this point, the slope k is zero, right? So those are the points where you have a, a horizontal ten, uh, ten line, the slope is zero. All right, now let's look at uh, some applications. Uh, this one says, uh, let's say, uh, say, suppose this is the ground. Uh, at a point which is five uh, feet high, and then a ball, right? A ball is slope, upward, okay? And well, in physics, or as a common sense, we know what happens, the ball will reach a high point and then it goes down, right? So first of all, the velocity will, um, will, they will slow down because the gravity. And then after it reaches the highest point, it goes down and it speeds up, right? And all the way goes to the ground. So this is what happens. All right, and HT represents the, uh, the, uh, the location, right? So, okay, so HT, just add a moment of T. This means that H is, is, it, this is HT, it's the height at a time T, right? We can say it's the height at time T. Okay, at a time T. All right. Uh, now, first of all, we want to calculate the velocity at T equals zero, and we know the, what's the velocity. Um, according to the uh, the physical meaning of derivative, the velocity of v, the velocity v of the ball is just the derivative, right? So velocity v, this just equals the derivative. Okay, so we are calculating this. What is the derivative? So first of all, let's calculate the derivative. Uh, first one just gets zero, so it's 64. The derivative of this is 64. And then you minus the derivative of that is 32 times t, right? You just take the derivative of each term, okay? Then h prime zero, so which is the derivative at zero, uh, which is uh, 64, and the derivative at one, so 64 minus 32 is 32. Now let's see, say, okay, what is, look at question two, at what time does the uh, ball reach the highest place? So which is right here, right? So what is the time here? 
you see, when it reaches the highest point, this just means the velocity is zero, right? Velocity is zero. So that means at this point, we have the derivative. We have the derivative equals zero for this highest point, okay? And then from here, we just get, okay, we are looking for is when the derivative is zero. So this just implies 64 minus 32 t uh, equals zero. So we get t equals two, two. So when at two right time t, so this is at uh, the second, right? So it equals to uh, when t equals two, uh, the derivative is zero, right? So the derivative is zero, okay. And that is which the highest point. Now, uh, if you try to find a derivative at a time, uh, if you try to find a derivative, let's say at a time uh, uh, three, right? So you say, okay, what is the three? Then you just uh, get is 64 minus three, two times three, you get 64 minus 96, right? What you get this is what? This is negative 32. Now say, hey, why do you get negative? You get negative because this is the velocity because now the velocity, the, uh, the ball is going down. So the velocity is points to downward. That's why it has a negative sign. So that's the point. When we talk about uh, velocity, there's actually, there's a direction. So positive means it's, um, it's, uh, it's on the same direction when you put a positive um, axis. If it's a negative, it means it's on the opposite direction when you put the uh, uh, positive axis, right? Okay. Question number two, uh, the side length of a cube, uh, we have here, we have a cube, right? Okay, so the side length of the cube, let's say it's X, so this one is expanding, right? So this, this, uh, this uh, cube is expanding. Uh, what is the instantaneous rate of change of the volume of the cube with respect to side length? Okay, now we know the, uh, the volume, how we count the volume? Volume is X cubed, right? Okay, so now here we take the derivative. Uh, this uh, represents um, uh, another important meaning of derivative in physics is the rate of change. Uh, speed or say velocity is a special rate of change. That's the rate of change of the distance that gives you the velocity. I would say, um, um, if you ignore the sign, we say speed. But in general, we can also talk about other instant, instantaneous rate of change. So here we have, we, we have to look at uh, the volume with respect to side length. Okay, so then we know we, what we need to do is you, you just take the derivative, right? So, okay, I take the derivative of this, and we know the derivative of this is 3x squared because remember, we have a general formula. The derivative of this, we derive this n to the x and minus one, right? So this is 3x squared. Okay, so then when x equal to two, uh, the rate two equals three times four, which is 12, right? Which is 12, okay. Last one, uh, what is the, uh, uh, here I have, right? So here I have, uh, let's look at this uh, parabola, y equals x squared. Now I want to find a tangent line, right? So, okay, let's look at, let's look at a tangent line. Right. So let's look at a tangent line at a point of two, right? So, okay, so this is two, uh, this is four, and we want to find the equation of the tangent line. Now, because we already know it passed through the point two four, in order to find the equation from higher school math, we know all you just need is the slope, right? You just need to find the slope. Okay, what's the slope? Uh, we know the slope is the derivative at this point two. And we know the derivative of square, this is two x, so the slope is four, all right? So the slope is four. After we figure out the slope, then we know it's a line passing through a point, so it's y minus four equals and four times, it's four times um, x minus two, right? So this is how we describe a, a, a line with a slope and with uh, given points. Uh, we can we can uh, re, we can simp we can uh, uh, rewrite this as x minus four and four x minus eight. So this is y equals four x minus four, right? Y equals four minus four. Okay, all right.